Hey guys, this is the second in the video in the series that I'm doing on testing the proposition that aluminum oxide and silicon carbide abrasives should not be used to sharpen high hardness, high vanadium content steels because the theory goes that those abrasives will be unable to shape the vanadium carbides but will be able to abrade the metal matrix around those carbides, thereby both malforming the apex because any vanadium carbides on the apex line will not have been shaped and secondly by undercutting the support by for the vanadium carbides that remain on the apex line um, because the metal matrix around the carbides themselves is abraded and that therefore the vanadium carbides on the apex line will be subject to um, being torn out in any type of uh, uh, test of apex strength or um, initial abrasive wear and that therefore there will be a noticeable rapid loss in uh, sharpness uh, from a high sharpness starting point and potentially an inability to obtain a very high sharpness when using aluminum oxide or silicon carbide abrasives on these types of steels. In the first test uh, in this series, I happen to have my Spyderco mule team in Maximet at 68 Rockwell, uh, which has an edge bevel around 15 degrees per side. I happen to have it at a very high level of polish because I was taking microscope images of a bunch of different scratch patterns on it. And so since I happen to have it at a 13,000 grit waterstone finish using an aluminum oxide waterstone, I went ahead and um, abraded it on a Spyderco Ultrafine, which is a solid sintered alumina stone, basically aluminum oxide turned into something like a ceramic tile, and tested the apex strength by doing some push cutting on pine and the high sharpness edge retention by slicing some cardboard and then checking the sharpness on newsprint. And in the first test, I found that I couldn't detect any noticeable effect uh, in terms of the initial sharpness of the edge, of the apex I should say, its strength in push cutting pine, or in its high sharpness edge retention slicing cardboard across the corrugations. Now, for my second video in this series, I am going to be trying the same type of procedure off of a DMT extra extra fine, which is what you can see in front of you in the video. Uh, this stone is rated as 8,000 mesh, but if you look up the grit equivalents, and I'm um, based on my experience with the stone and microscope images of the scratch pattern, the actual effective grit equivalents in Japanese waterstone grits is about 4,000. So this is the close, the highest um, Japanese waterstone grit equivalent stone diamond plate from a reputable manufacturer that you can get and so that's why I'm using it to compare to a King 4000, a Sigma Power Select 2 3000 and a Spyderco Medium which notwithstanding uh, the rating of its grit actually leaves a scratch pattern finer than a DMT extra extra fine. Uh, when I do the video testing the apex finish on a Spyderco Medium I'll show you the comparative microscope images of the scratch patterns to show you that a Spyderco Medium leaves a comparable apex finish, actually a finer one than this stone. Anyway, so today I'm doing the uh, DMT Extra Extra Fine and this is my Spyderco uh, Mule Team in Maximet at around 68 Rockwell according to Spyderco and it's got a 15 degree per side um, edge bevel that was done was close to that's about what the factory edge bevel was on this knife but it's about also what it stayed as I've been sharpening it because I haven't lowered the edge bevel angle yet I will be trying that after I'm done with all of these tests after the previous test uh, with the 13,000 grit and Spyderco ultrafine uh, finish I cut off the apex of the uh, mule on my DMT extra fine which has a Japanese waterstone grid equivalent of about 1750. And, um, but I, I didn't mind because I didn't want to bother going down to an Atoma 1200, so I just did the extra passes on the 1750 grid equivalents yeah, extra fine because there wasn't that much time difference anyway. Anyway, point is that I um, shaped the edge bevel on the DMT extra fine until light would no longer reflect off the apex from a directed light source 
And then I moved to the DMT extra extra fine and made about 50 passes per side. I'm going to do another um, f 50 or so passes per side to make sure that I've completely replaced the scratch pattern from the DMT extra fine and then we're going to start the test. So. Okay, let me clean the mineral oil off of there. And since this is a non-friable stone, which is to say it doesn't release abrasive, there is no rounding of the apex when you make edge leading strokes. So, at this grit you should be able to get an apex that will do cross grain push cuts on newsprint at 90 degrees. You, it's actually much more difficult to get this level of push cutting sharpness uh, off of a water stone at this grit because water stones shed grit and so when you make edge leading passes on a 4000 grit water stone there tends to be some minor level of apex rounding that means that typically you'll get an apex off of a three or 4000 grit water stone that will uh, slice newsprint easily, push cut it with the grain easily, but can hesitate to push cut it across the grain because of the slight apex rounding. But we'll see about that when we get to the water stones. In any case, that shows you that the um, apex is at a high level of push cutting sharpness. So we can start with this demonstration. Um, you know, actually, let me just move this stone out of the way. I don't want to be getting wood shavings all over it after. So. Sorry, somebody complained on the comments to the last one of these I made that I wasn't twisting out of cuts enough, but I'm doing my best here to do so to put a little more twisting force into it without putting too much. So that's more than I'm probably willing to put. But okay, we'll go back to this side. There, I'm scalloping back up out of cuts. And there's no visible microchipping, so that's good. So we'll check. And really, as expected, the 
push cutting sharpness has not really suffered very much because push cutting wood is not exactly a highly wear inducing thing so as long as the apex doesn't experience any microscopic rolling or chipping it shouldn't really lose too much of its initial sharpness in push cutting wood at least not in just a few cuts I guess if you do a lot eventually it will but I mean with the amount we're doing for this kind of a test really something has gone wrong if you have a total loss of or a significantly noticeable loss of sharpness in just a few cuts on pine. See now, I'm not entirely comfortable with that. I don't really want to twist out of that cut. I don't care which of the uh, stones I'm testing the finish off of. I know supposedly it's supposed to be fine, but As expected, it's continuing to be okay. There. I don't want to twist that out cut that deep though. So maybe I'll try and notch that out coming back the other way. Get a little more of that. So, this is pretty much expected behavior, really. I wouldn't expect, as I said, any really significant loss or a really big loss of push cutting sharpness in this kind of a test unless something had gone wrong. So, still, I mean, on the first half of the blade, I think you have more of a Somewhere up here you have more of a loss than I've noticed previously, but it's not a big enough area to be easily found. And the rest of the blade seems to be push cutting across the grain at 90 degrees relatively fine. So, okay, that covers that. Now, just while we're here, let me grab some, see if I can find some cardboard to use for this. I forgot to get some cardboard ready prior to starting the test, but this is just a quick check of high sharpness edge retention. And basically it's to check that there's not a catastrophic loss of sharpness from carbide tear out from push cutting or from sorry slicing some cardboard so the expectation here isn't that it would retain all of the push cutting sharpness it initially had but as a lower grip finish it will retain more because essentially once the microscopic teeth are small enough to push cut newsprint across the grain uh, without much of an issue. Making them any smaller just means that you will start to um, dull the edge faster. So basically a 4000 grit edge will have higher initial sharpness retention on slicing cardboard than a 12000 grit edge would in general. with the corrugations I want to go across. Let's 
holding up quite well. I'm eager to see how the uh, Spyderco Medium Ceramic compares to that because it's the closest solid, um, non-friable aluminum oxide or silicon carbide based uh, abrasive that I will be able to get similar kind of um, really high push cutting sharpness with uh, still retaining some slicing aggression. So that'll be the best comparison I think. And just to check what the slicing aggression is like, as I forgot to check it before we started the test. It's not bad. Um, if I would have checked this before the test started, maybe I'll cut in a clip of it after. Um, you would see that you get an extremely high initial uh, slicing aggression off of the... Um, DMT extra extra fine. It's actually one of my favorite stones for um, micro bevels. I use it all the time actually. Uh, I just don't usually use it to shape edge bevels. Anyway, um, maybe we'll do a couple more slices of cardboard, see if we can generate a little bit more of a change. So we're starting at this point to have some sections along the apex line that are struggling to do cross grain push cuts, which is actually a very good performance. Maximet um, has really surprised me in this respect that its high sharpness edge retention is a lot better than I would have typically expected for this kind of steel. Um, the closest analogy I'd experienced previously was ZDP-189 and ZDP-189 tends to um, microscopically chip fair, comparatively easily, more easily than my experience so far has been with Maximet. So um, that's been a pleasant surprise with this uh, steel. In any case, that just shows the expected level of performance and um, it won't doesn't mean anything in isolation, nor can it be directly compared to the first test with the um, 13,000 grit finish because that that apex had been, or that edge bevel had been polished on several different stones prior to being used for the test and some rounding had already occurred. Plus the grits are totally different. So um, this will be, this test will be more directly comparable to the tests that are going to immediately follow it.